Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we are looking at spark plugs. So, um, I've done a little shitty chicken sketchy drawing of a spark plug, and it's really crap, but we'll just go with it anyway. So, basically, there are three main components there are your electrode, electrode, there is your insulator, insulator, and then there's basically just your body. So your bodies are generally made out of steel and generally it's a um, galvanised, either nickel plated or zinc plated or something like that. Um, your insulator is uh, porcelain, so it's a ceramic, and your electrode can range from nickel alloys, chrome, palladium, utitrium, uh, iridium, there's loads of platinum, there's loads of different kinds of electrodes that they can use. And back in the day they used to actually use copper and then before that they used to use carbon like carbon rods, like carbon electrodes. So, how does this thing work? Well, it's quite simple. All you do is you give it a load of voltage, a high, massive voltage potential that travels down here, and there is a um, gas between these two, which is your fuel-air mixture, and there's such a voltage potential difference between here and here that a spark is produced. It jumps, and it conducts. It's conducted by all the... Um, air and all the rest of it, it's at high pressures and the reason why you need such a high voltage generally if even if you've got 125 or a moped or anything like that all the way up to your you know GSXR thousands and what have you it's between 125 and 180 depends on the system thousand volts it is seriously high but the current is fuck all it's basically your coil is going to step down it's kind of like a transformer where it reduces the current and ups the voltage. So without going into voltage potentials and blah 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 and all the electronics of it, let's just look at it from a mechanical point of view. We know electricity goes down it and it jumps, but let's look at it um, from material choice and construction and so on. So you have your body which has your um, hex on it so you can wind it down into its thread. These threads are um, just usually standard imperial uh, imperial or metric sizes so you know they're all common threads like m10s and blah 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 they're usually fine pitch so it's usually unf or um, fine pitch metric the uh, insulator is a porcelain um, like i say it's a very good insulator it doesn't conduct electricity and all the rest of it but one thing that spark plugs have to contend with is radio frequencies um, the electromagnetism and all the rest of it, you start sticking massive voltages down, you start to get emissions, radio emissions and so on and so forth and there has to be some kind of shielding. One of the reasons why your HT cable, if you see a high tension cable that goes from your coil to your spark plug, you'll see that it's a massive insulator like this, but when you actually chop the wire out, the wire is this tiny little wire in the middle. Um, that's because it doesn't have to carry much current, it has to carry a shitload of voltage and Volt, um, resistance, which is where heat comes from, is all to do with current, so your voltage, really high voltage, fuck all current, you don't really need a, a heavy gauge wire to carry that voltage. And the insulator of your HT lead, your high tension lead, because it's high tension voltage, um, the insulator is huge and the insulator is there to one stop your spark jumping from one spark lead to another, which can happen and it's also to get rid of some of the RF frequencies that you get because if you're jumping up and down with um, voltage and current and what have you then you obviously get your um, magnetism and all the rest of it involved so you can get some really bad radio frequencies and when they first started doing stuff like this with cars and radios like your actual music radio it used to scream and make all sorts of noises so um, one thing I will say is that you'll notice on spark plugs that they have these ribs at the top and someone said to me, oh I know what them ribs are for, them ribs are for so you can grab the spark plug and pull it out. No, these ribs are actually again to do with this RF, um, to do with the frequency uh, noise that basically comes out of having such a high tension voltage system. Uh, these rings are to disrupt the magnetic field so if you look at, um, I'll put a picture up now of uh, the power station rings and all the rest of it this is to stop leakage and what have you so sparks don't start jumping and all the rest of it if you have uh, certain spacing so these ribs on these on the top of spark plugs are actually calculated they're not there to grip they're not there to look sexy or to make it just look like a spark plug this is to actually help with the insulation and to stop leakage and so on and so forth um, 
the porcelain obviously porcelain ceramics can usually generally take really high temperatures so that's fine as well although they are not very good conductors of heat which is a bit of a drawback apart from that um, your spark gap is extremely important and I'm going to do an experiment where I make a uh, pressure chamber out of an old cylinder a gas cylinder and I'll put a window in it and we can pump it up to different pressures so like just say it to 150 bar stuff like that 150 psi not bar uh, go up to about 12 bar stuff like that and we can see how weaker uh, how you know how this affects the spark so a lot of people when they have spark problems they say oh yeah just ground it out uh, turn your starter motor on and if you see a nice blue spark but the thing is I've done that and then it looks fine and then you stick it in the engine it doesn't run and it actually is to do with the pressure because the greater the pressure inside the cylinder, the more resistant it is to transmit uh, to conduct electricity. So that's why we use such high voltage potentials to jump that space, that gap. Um, what you know, what are the problems with spark plugs? Well, the insulator can crack, and if you crack an insulator, you get leakage, and it's really bad problems. If you crack it, say here, because the body of the spark plug is ground and it's grounded to the engine which is grounded to the frame and closes the entire circuit you can get a crack in your um, insulator even internally and literally it will leak out to the body here and you will not get a spark um, so and because spark plugs are so cheap and but they shouldn't be cheap because they're extremely complicated but because they are so cheap because we produce hundreds of millions of them per year it's best just to swap them out just in case um, other things that can problem uh, what happens over time is your electrode erodes you'll start to see that it starts to round off and start to look like shit your um, grounding arm here that starts to erode you know it starts to oxidize it is steel and it's going through a lot of heat cycles and so on um, or what can happen is your actual um, electrode inside internally can crack due to thermal stresses and what have you but uh, it's a pretty simple thing it's a thing we can't do without the grate um, I will do a video on glow plugs because diesels use glow plugs. That is a different process than this. And we'll also look at uh, glow plugs for methanol, so platinum filaments and so on and so forth. So that's a brief introduction. If anyone wants any more, I can expand on this. And we will do, like I say, I will do a video one day when we do the test where we can look at the spark over different pressures. And then I'll see if I can crank it up so high that we can just stop it. Um, producing a spark altogether. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.